I I'm very honored to be invited to this very excellent symposium, and I hope all the international guests are enjoying this Japanese typhoon. <laughs> so this is my title, and I'm going to talk about the nutri genomics today. Uh, I guess most of you know the term nutrigenomics. Nutrigenomics is a uh, combined word with nutrition and genomics. And we use these genomics, transcri transcriptomics, proteomics, and metabolomics to res research functionality and safety of food. And in, in addition to these omics, there are some more recently, for example, epigenomics. And also uh, transcriptomics has uh, not only microRNA, but also non-coding RNA. And here is the Japanese, uh, Japanese traditional diet, or washoku, was enlisted as a UNESCO's intangible cultural heritage. And the reason is shown here. So Japanese traditional diet is very, like here, very healthy. And I, show here some good aspects of Japanese diet. Um, for example, high variety of side dishes, small portion size, and high consumption of fish, and beans, green tea, and not too much sweets. And, and Japanese people have knowledge in nutrition as cook, cooking. And I'm going to start with the soy. Uh, today, today, I'm going to show you some, uh, I, I picked up three topics, which these are related to Japanese dietary styles. So the first one is soy. Here, I show you that Japanese consume a lot of soy. And uh, the, 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 these green bars show the consumption of soy among countries. And this blue dot shows the production. So as you see, Japan has the highest uh, soy consumption. On the other hand, USA <coughs> consumes very few and Argentina, almost nothing. So we eat soy as a variety of forms like this. And this is the background of my study. Uh, we, in our previous study, we gave the, this diabetic mice, uh, gen, mice genistein, which is uh, one of the main isoflavone of soybean. And we analyzed the effect of this genistein on the diabetic uh, symptom. And we happened to found that through DNA microanalysis that in skeletal muscle that in diabetic mice, this gene, the expre expression of this gene is what was upregulated. And but uh, this mice fed with uh, genistein, this gene expression was downregulated. So, and this gene, atrogene one, is known to be involved in muscle atrophy. So 
we then um, the, this result prompted, uh, prompted us to study the if genistein has really have preventive effects of um, muscle at, at atrophy. So this is the ex experimental design, and we gave uh, we did um, uh, we induced a muscle atrophy by denervation, and on the, the rats were given normal diet or normal diet containing 0.05 percent genistein, and denervation was done at on day 14, and after 10 days, uh, they were sacrificed. So, this is a result of the muscle mass. Maybe you can see, uh, this one is easier to see. Denervation induced the about 50% loss of uh, leg muscle. On the other hand, in genistein group, the muscle loss was about 40%. And the expression of atrogen 1 was increased by this denervation, but increase was uh, attenuated by the genistein intake. Also, another um, atrophy-related gene, uh, these are ub ub ubiquitin ligases, and this one was also upregulated by denervation and also reduced by the, suppressed by the genistein intake. And we did, we performed this upstream genes analysis. And this shows, this one shows the uh, upstream factors of Atrogen and MAF1. This one is upstream. D these are upstream factors of Atrogen1, and this one is upstream factors of MAF1. And these are common upstream factors. And this this is this shows the comparison between genistein and the denervation. So, as you see, uh, what one of the common factors, this FOXO1, was upregulated by denervation and down downregulated by genistein. So this was uh, confirmed at, by, uh, at the protein levels like this. And we, we, we performed another analysis. Uh, this is transcription factor analysis. And these are upregulated genes, and this one, just this one is downregulated. But up, uh, up transcription factors, uh, uh, this, uh, all, all, all these factors, upstream of these factors pre, uh, present the estrogen receptor one and the estrogen receptor two. Uh, it is it can be easily uh, assumed, but actually we found that estrogen receptor is a major culprit regulating many genes in the muscle. So we next we try to verify if estrogen receptor is involved by using ER antagonist. Or there are two estrogen receptor subtypes, ER alpha and ER beta, and we try to find which subtype is involved in the effect of genistein. So we, we infused uh, estrogen antagonist uh, with 
uh, genistein intake, and also we infused estrogen receptor and agonist, alpha type agonist and beta type agonist. So we found that it, this effect of genistein was uh, totally sub, uh, suppressed by the antagonist of estrogen receptor. And also, ER agonist, uh, infusion of ER alpha an agonist uh, suppressed muscle atrophy. So, the conclusion of this part is that uh, genistein intake uh, prevent muscle atrophy through FOXO1 and ER alpha. So, this study is. First, we found the, through the omics analysis in diabetes model, we found new function of uh, food factor. Then we did another omics analysis and we verified and we found uh, the mechanism. Okay. So, next part is egg. And Japanese consume 329 eggs per year. This is number three in the world. And very special to Japanese is uh, we eat raw eggs like with uh, rice and soy sauce or with sukiyaki. But today's my topic is not this the, the inside of egg, but my topic is this egg shell membrane. Egg shell membrane is a double membrane between egg shell and albumen. When you eat boiled egg, you, this, this thin membrane will annoy you. And we have this very fine powder of this eggshell membrane. And this eggshell membrane is a byproduct of uh, egg processing, like production of mayonnaise. And these, these are discarded as an industrial waste. It's 70 ton per year in Japan. And so it's an environment, environmental burden. So there are some previous study on the effect of eggshell membrane. Like they reported safety and anti-inflammatory effect of eggshell membrane. And they reported suppressive effect of ESM on arthritis, and we previously published that it has protective function against liver injury. So we then, uh, as anti-inflammatory effect is already known that we next addressed if the axial membrane powder has uh, ameliorating effect on inflammatory bowel diseases. The number of IBD in Japan is uh, skyrocketing. So it's a very severe problem. And the study design is like this. Uh, we have control group and we induced IBD with DSS. They were given, these rats were given DSS, 1.5% DSS starting this day. And ESM group was given 8% external membrane powder. So this is disease index and this one is control and blue one, it shows the 
DSS group and orange one is ESM. So this suppress the symptom. And on the on, on, on the right side, this is plasma IL-6. So DSS group has ha very high IL-6 and DSM group has very low. And we did multi-omics analysis in the liver and also in the colon. So this is some data of the multi-omics study in the liver. We did uh, transcriptomics, proteomics, and metabolomics. And here are three major uh, pathways. And as you can see, G shows the uh, gene expression and M is metabolite and P, uh, P is uh, protein. So P, 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 P is protein. So, but let me just to make a long story very short, the conclusion from this multi-omics study, one of the conclusions is that this, path, this pathway to, from glucose to production of energy, this pathway is uh, hindered, this pathway is uh, down regulated by DSS and it is uh, recovered by DSS. So maybe it is one, uh, it, it could be one of the reasons that body weight of this DSS group is um, better than the DSS, uh, the ESM group is better than the DSS group and the muscle weight is uh, recovered by ESM. And this is microbi uh, microbiome analysis using next generation sequencing. And as you can easily see that uh, ESM uh, the, uh, ameliorated the dysbiosis of the by DSS, and we also measured many other things. This is some some uh, LPS the, uh, related uh, factors and. LPS concentration in the liver was higher in DSS and it was reduced in DSS group, which shows the barrier function of intestine is, is uh, improved by the ES, ESM. So, and these are, uh, these are factors involved in T TLR4 signaling. And we also found that uh, e the, the amount of E. coli in the intestine was, uh, in this cecum was higher in the SS group and lower in DSM group. So, Also, we found that um, TH17 cells in mesenteric lymph node is higher in DSS group and lower in the ESM group. So this shows the uh, this shows that. Um, Th17, ah, Th17 cells is known to induce, uh, known to be involved in IBD. So this 
maybe this is involved in the effect of ESM. So this is the this is the conclusion from this part. But I I think I don't have time to show you everything. So this is, this was just published. So if you are interested, please look at please have a look at this. So the last part of my talk is um, I, I, I'm going to tell you something bad aspect of Japanese diet. Uh, incre the first one is increase of overweight, especially in main, men, and increase in lean young women and increase in fat consumption and high salt intake and low calcium and iron intake, low folate intake and among pregnant women, increase in malnutrition in elderly. So my next topic is relating to these two. So, here you show you see the increase of obese mean, men and lean underweight young young women uh, like this and maybe this is uh, surprising that energy intake of Japanese women. Uh, in their 20s, 20s, is extremely low. Uh, in 1995, they had uh, almost 1,900 ca calories, kilocalories per day, but now young wi women eat, uh, take less than 1,600. So which is uh, one of the which is the main cause of the increase of the lean young women. And also, this is another problem in Japan, and the increase of underweight newborn. Here, uh, here this is the mean uh, mean of OECD countries, and this is Finland and Spain, but Japan has the highest rate of the underweight newborn. So what is what going to happen to these underweight newborn, underweight babies? Uh, there is a concept of Developmental origin of adult health and disease, uh, abbreviated as DOHAT. We have we have this. We, we just call this DOHAT. And this is a concept that if uh, at the early age, uh, early stage of life, if they are. Uh, exposed to some some environmental stress uh, especially under nutrition they their body the body of the fetus is programmed to uh, thrifty type so after birth if they uh, they have uh, abundant nutrient, they will become, they will easily become uh, cardiovascular disease and other diseases. So, and here I would like to show you the our DOHAT model. This is um, stroke prone spontaneously hypertensive rats. And this is a model of uh, hypertension. And this rat uh, 
has high, very high blood pressure, and these rats will die when they were given high salt water. So our experimental model is like this. We, in this case, we use low protein diet. We give, we give, we give low protein diet or normal protein diet to the pregnant mother. And the pups, after the pups were born, they were given normal diet. And after 10 or 11 weeks, they were given uh, high salt water. So uh, this is the schedule. And so control and low protein during pregnancy. and. They were given high salt, that the pups were given uh, high salt water, about 1% 1 1, 1 salt water. And this is the blood, blood pressure after they were given salt. The, this is a um, control group, and this one is low protein group. This has higher uh, blood pressure. And this is the survival rate. And this is control group, and this one is low protein group. They die much faster earlier. And let me show you a little bit the regulation system of blood pressure. This is really angiotensin system. Uh, but you, I think you are familiar with this kind of thing, but there is a, here is angiotensin 2, and there are two types of angiotensin receptors. This one is uh, well known, which causes um, hypertension, and this one is a kind of counter, counteract, counteract to this AT1 receptor. So, We, we found that this, this receptor, this receptor of the uh, pups of low protein, low protein uh, maternal protein restriction group is downregulated by, uh, downregulated in adrenal and kidney tissues. But in the salt loaded groups, this was uh, opposite. Opposite effect was found. Wow. Because I, I, we think that this uh, contradictory result is due to the this this one is up, um, upregulated by kidney damage. So we know that this kidney, MPR kidney, which was sold, loaded, was very, has very high damage. So it is the reason maybe it, it caused. And so what, the the mechanism of the door hut like this uh, very well studied and as yesterday's as, as was yesterday's lectures um, epigenetic modulation is involved and epigenetic in, uh, modification is. Uh, Change, ch changed by food and nutrition. So we analyzed the uh, maceration of this AT, AGTR2 gene in the kidney of the pups, and we did by sulfite sequencing. There are just four CPG uh, around the transcription start site. So we just uh, analyzed this, these four 
sites. And we found that the methylation of two CPG, CPG was uh, changed. And the protein expression is here and methylation of minus 26 is here. So the, from this methylation of this site may not negatively, but positively regulated this ATG2 to, to expression. And we also did some methylome analysis, genome-wide methylation analysis. And we found, uh, we found lo lo locations around 23 genes were significantly changed. They, in, they uh, which involved in this PTGER gene. And PTGER encodes the prostaglandin E2 receptor, which is involved in sodium retention. And we verified the methylation. Here is CPG island, and here are other CPGs, but we found that this region was not changed by low protein diet, but this region was uh, highly affected, uh, like this. And here, here is the percentage of methylation. And expression of PG, PTG1 was upregulated by low protein diet. Also, this is the expression of target gene of uh, PTGR, PG2R. Uh, this gene is known to be negatively regulated by PG, PGE2R. So this sodium channel is was also uh, was downregulated by maternal low protein diet. And also, plasma uh, and aldosterone was also increased by the maternal protein. And this is the end of my talk, but. I would like to show you a few more slides. Uh, as you may know that the Olympic game 2020 will be held in Tokyo. Then this was, uh, this boat was done on September 7th, 2013 in Rio. And please just remember this, September 7. Just 11 days later, there was a bid for International Congress of Nutrition 2021. So this is me. And so. ICN, International Congress of Nutrition 2021, will be held in Tokyo, in Tokyo International Forum from September 14 to 19th. So I would like to welcome you all to Tokyo. Thank you. <laughs>